Okay, I'm going to go over a few points in preparation for next week. Starting with Euro US dollar, the Fed meets on the Fed announcement is on Wednesday, so that should impact these markets. Now, a number of things on Euro US dollar to start from the beginning. The move from January 2017 has effectively finished. It is effectively five waves up into here. So I'm going to hold that as being likely to move down more than up from here. And that sounds like shit, but that's the way it goes. So we're going to look for bearish setups. Now, currently, it's possible to view this. I was calling this three waves before. I suppose you can justify a five wave decline here with a very long one. You can get three waves to here for three, and then a small move here for four and five. I suppose it's possible. I mean, given what happened on pound Australian just now with a very clear five wave decline that failed, hey, why not take one that looks like shit and try to make the most of it? So I'm going to view that as possibly having a high in here on 16 February. Um, now, currently, if you look at the candle, how the candle closed this week, um, it is pointing down, but it's resting on the 8 EMA, and it's kind of like in the range of this upward looking one, so it's kind of range bound. Now, I am considering on the four hour that we may be looking at another move up because this here can be counted as five waves. It is possible to do that. It's possible to view this as one to here, wave two, wave three, wave four, wave five, no overlap. So it's possible to have five waves there. And uh, looking at this, I cannot rule out the idea that this, this decline looks like three waves here. So it would be a matter of making a three wave decline, possibly another move up above one, two, four, fifty, and then perhaps declining then. We're going to use a lot of perhaps and maybes in these videos after Pound Australian gave us the old heave ho up the ass. So um, let's keep it that way. So the downside is favored here. I don't really have an Elliott Wave explanation for a new high. I can make one. It's always easy to make another explanation after the fact. That's the thing about this. It's, it's so malleable that you can kind of manipulate it within this kind of like really broad framework. But in any case, for in terms of setups, I want to consider a bearish setup overall. And that the bigger move in a bigger perspective over the next number of months will be to the downside, most likely. Because if you look at the monthly, we're at that resistance point. You can probably draw a di diagonal down from here too. It's not perfect, but uh, it's there at resistance effectively. Same with pound, which I'll go over in a second. So if there is a bounce this week, I'll look for it as probably a sell opportunity on a towards a new high up here. So there's no reversal yet, but um, this part of the move looks like five waves into here for a bigger three-way move. So maybe it can get some traction going up next week. And uh, there's a bit of divergence on the one hour or two on this new low. So I have to see if it holds for a move up a bit. Um, because for me, this pair has a lot of confusion. I've not been dealing, or rather I'm confused about this pair because I, I've said so and I've not been dealing with it because this is a bit open to interpretation. Maybe it's five down. This could be five up. And then this is looking like a three-way move of presence. So a bit more upside is kind of um, possible within a more bearish view. You can see the rest is kind of self-explanatory. So I will leave it there on that. It has not been the best pair to trade. Um, I've liked cable more lately. And I've been focusing more on this. This still has the possibility for moving up a bit higher. I think there is still a move in this open to 142, but um, 
I'll go over two possibilities just now. I've been dealing with this mostly over the last few weeks. There have been a small number of good trades in here, such as this one this past week. And there were a number of trades in here that I went over live in Twitter before they happened. So there have been a few good ones and a bunch I've missed as well. Now, looking at this, there's the possibility of a small breakout here. You can see the bounce off the line just there on Friday. I'm just going to pull this back because <coughs> I want to explain something. <coughs> Sorry. So the view has been that I've been running that we may have <coughs> a small bull flag here to buy up for another move. And I do like the to a new high. I don't want to get... Oh, to exaggerate it, but um, 142 is one area I've been looking at. So if that holds on Monday and Tuesday, there's a possibility for a move up higher. Um, the alternative to that is that we may be looking, this is just to me looking like a three-wave correction. Now it's possible that this here is its own three-wave correction. You can see that clearer if you zoom out here, that this looks like a three-wave correction. So if the bull flag does not work out to a new high, I'm going to look at this as possibly being a three-wave correction and rolling over. At the moment, I'm looking for the upside for the bull flag, but if the bull flag continues to not break out, I'm going to look at this more like a three-wave correction for like an X-wave and then possibly turning over lower because a number of things are pointing down in this and uh, the US dollar seems to be picking up strength. So those are the two local ideas. Bull flag for a move higher. If that fails, this is a three-wave correction of its own, and I'm going to look for a move down to a break of 138 and uh, head back down towards 136. Long-term chart. I've been over this. One more quick mention. It's in resistance on a corrective advance. We may see a bit of sideways motion into trend over the next few months. Who knows? But um, the odds favor a downward move from here. Okay, I'll start with New Zealand. I'm just going to go over these four. This corrective move was spotted on Twitter and talked through. And uh, upon this break right here, there was not much more resistance and it's plummeted. Now, on the daily, it looks like this pair has been mostly working okay overall. It did not make the new high here. The bigger idea on this over this very quickly. The bigger idea that three waves have finished to here has worked and then we had a three wave decline and a corrective move up in three and I'm going to look for another move down now. That's the idea I've been talking about for a while. So um, if this breaks here, if I suppose a lot of sellers are going to come in, classical chartists and um, traders who view horizontal levels and that kind of thing are going to view this as a selling opportunity for a strong move down because as you can see there is a lot of space in this thing there's a big gap area here back towards 69 or 68 <coughs> so this pair is bearish and i'm going to continue to look at it bearishly on a bounce a three wave correction will be a sell opportunity this part is already broken down I don't have much more to say about that. You may see a bounce here. You may see a bounce just on a slight break of a low here at 71.84, a bit of a retracement and a sell. But uh, when it gives a three-wave correction off of this, something similar to this, but of smaller scale most likely, there should be a sell opportunity. Like you can see, three-wave correction, small correction. There's a bunch of those. Some are cleaner than others. Okay, this one's quite clear. This, these are more difficult along the way. But um, this one is a typical type of flag overlapping correction, which was identifiable. Now, Aussie US dollar had a very similar look, although the weekly, this is the thing about candles are useful, but 
you know, they don't tell as much as price action on a lower time frame. Now, the engulfing candle the week before did see the initial upward move. But on the daily, it became evident that it was, let me go to the four hour, that this was this upward move was looking corrective as a three-way move like this. And the breakdown over the weekend, well, you can see what's happened. It's looking like it's going to move towards this region of 76 something. And uh, maybe there will be a bounce there. It's looking very bearish as a flag. So probably there's a good chance of seeing it, a bounce either before the trend line or after. Because it can come through, it can make a flag, and then it's the usual thing, basically. Now this, given how this overall looks like a corrective pattern, well, certainly it looks like a corrective pattern, it's favoring a strong move back towards 70 on the break. I think a lot of traders will be looking at this as a bearish move down. So that's how it appears. Um, while I have this chart open, I may as well stick on gold and point out once again the kinship between these two, as you can see. Move in tandem. So if this does, if Aussie US dollar does crack and continues to show to sell off, it's likely if this um, synchronicity holds that cable. Uh, sorry, not cable. Gold will also follow down. You can see how tight they've been bound. So there'll probably be a bounce towards here, but the violence of this sell setup at the moment. There are too many possibilities at the moment for future moves, but the one to go with is down for any bearish setup. So like New Zealand US dollar, same thing actually. These two are tied at the hip. Now these two have moved well ahead of the euro and the pound. The pound for some reason has been the strongest of the currencies. I don't know why that is. I pulled that. It's possible Theresa May may be the devil. Um, there's no not so much evidence of that. She's kind of a weak figure, but again, it cannot be ruled out. Euro 2 has held up relatively well compared to Aussie and New Zealand. So I feel that Euro and Pound will eventually follow and you can see the significance of a trend break here. And uh, cable just showed on the monthly. So the US dollar is looking like it's making its comeback. I can't rule out another move down, but uh, it held that level. The move I talked about in Euro US dollar at the beginning of a flag will be like this. We may see another low here and then maybe we can take it up from there, but that's only speculation. It's also possible that it finds a way to continue up here. Now you can see the trend resistance here. A breakout will be significant. I don't think the dollar is favored too well overall. At this point it certainly wasn't at 88. But uh, there is the move up, uh, the potential for a move up here. There's not much else to say about it. It's, it's kind of self-explanatory. Now, my favorite 8 EMA, which has been serving as resistance for a while, is coming in a little higher. 91.80, one second. Basically a trend line level. So uh, I don't know. We may see also another possibility. We could also just see a three-way move towards trend, a bit of a rollover, and then a thrust up. So it turns into a kind of like three-way move. There are all kinds of possibilities. But overall, generally, I want to give the dollar the benefit. Um, my view is dollar bullish in 2018 and probably 2019 because there is a completed pattern here. Now, in the long term, um, it's dollar bearish. But in the medium, near term, well, 2018, 2019, it's dollar bullish. Any five-wave completed pattern like that, if that's valid, that's suggesting a bearish move.
in the future after a correction. So the idea is correct, maybe to here, maybe to here, maybe to here, not make a new high and um, roll over and crack and plummet and uh, do all kinds of bad things. Okay, so that's it. Wednesday, Fed, I think Wednesday, and um, maybe we'll get a bit of resolution on this. Cable's been my main pair, and uh, you can see the close on Monday. Well, let's see what happens. The other thing I was talking about, cable, it kind of has that kind of like rounded look to it. So um, I'm going to work that until it fails. And if it doesn't break out, I'll go down then. Okay. Good luck next week.